Is it GIF or GIF? I don't know. It's an age-old question. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Giphy's API to generate animated text with React.js. At the end of this video, I'll go over some of the additional features and functions of this API and give you some ideas so that you can make a custom portfolio using the Giphy API. To start, you just need a basic React.js development environment. I'm using Create React App. We then need to go to Giphy and get our API key, just sign up for their developer program. It's pretty easy. We're going to create a components folder for an error handling component and then a list component to just return those results from the API. We also want an environment variable where we're going to store our API key so it's not right in our source code. And then we're also going to want to import all that stuff at the top of our main app function. Next, let's get to work on the main app function and returning those results from the API. The first thing we're going to want to do is create our Giphy API object. So we're just going to use new dot Giphy fetch, which is what we're importing. And then we're going to use process dot environment variable to grab our API key. You want to make sure that you append rate react app and then whatever you want to name it after that. That's how create react app reads that variable. Next, we are going to create our state. So we're going to have a basic text use state with an empty string to start. And it's going to be text and then set text. That's going to be what holds our user input. We're going to create an empty array and that's going to hold the results from the API. And then we're also going to create a error uh, state object that we can pass down to an error component and we're going to set that to false by default. We're going to need a event handler for our input function so that's just going to be, it's going to take that event object and it's going to set the text to whatever's in our input. Underneath that we're going to handle submissions so we're going to have a little bit of an error handler, handler. we don't want to send empty text to the API so we're just going to check if our text is empty, if its length is zero, we're going to set error to true and that will get passed down to our error object so it displays to the user and then we're just going to return. If a length is greater than one, we are going to create our async function for the API, API call. We're going to await our API, so it's going to be Giphy animate. We pass in our text as the argument and then we can set, there's a bunch of different options you can add. We're going to set limit to 20 so it only returns 20 um, different variations of that text. And then once that returns, we're going to set our results to our result object. And we also want to make sure that you only take the data section of that response. Then we're going to call our async, func async function and we're also going to set our input back to empty and also make sure if before there was an error, now we're gonna set that error back to false. Now let's test this out before we even start messing around with the JSX and React, let's make sure our data is actually coming in. So if we go to our console and log that out, we can see we get our object and we can see we get an array of data. And you see each of them has an ID and we get these URLs to the image itself. And we can use that with an image tag to make that show up on our screen now for the main app. JSX, we're going to just have a div to hold it all. We'll just leave that named app. We're going to have our title. We're just going to say animated text generator and then tell the user what to do, type in the form. We have an input tag, which is going to hold our text. So you want to make sure that you have that on change event handler and also set the value to our current state. And then you're also going to have your button with those class names that we'll use later to style them. And you're going to have your on-click to handle the submission. And then underneath that, we're also going to put our error component. So if we, right now, that won't show up. But if state gets turned to true, or if the error state is true, that will then show up. We're also going to then do some conditional rendering. So if we don't have anything in our results array, we're going to leave it empty. But if that results is filled from the response, we're going to show off our list of objects. So now let's implement those two components that we need to show our response. First, we're going to create the error component, which is really simple. If there's no error, it's just going to return null so that nothing shows up. But if props for error is true, then what's going to happen 
is we're going to return our error text and that text is customizable. We're passing it as a string to the object and we're also going to set that class name to error and we'll use that to style it later. Now for our list component, what we're going to do is map over that. We're passing it down as gifs. So our array of gifs, we're going to map over that and we're going to pass our the URL into a item component. So all that is is a div with a class name of gif item or gif item. And inside that, all there is is an image, HTML tag, and the source is going to be that URL. So then inside that, we're going to assign that map array. Once we've generated all those components, we're then going to assign it to items. And inside a, t a list container, we are going to render those items. And then that'll be returned to the main app. Now let's make everything look fancy with some CSS. So for our error component, we're just going to make the text color red, increase the font size to 20 pixels, and put the font weight at 500 so it's kind of bolded. For our input field, we're going to have 20 pixel font size. We're going to vertically align it so that our button and the input field match up. We're also going to add a transition property, uh, put the border width at 2 pixels, and give it a little bit of margin field we're also going to add focus and hover effects and this is just a box shadow which is to give it that kind of material design effect where when you hover on it it kind of lifts off and gives it a 3d effect for our submission button we're going to give it a blue background color uh, text color is going to be white some padding again vertically align it get rid of that outline and just some basic uh, stuff like that i don't really need to go over and for our container, what we want to do is we're going to create a flex box. We're going to make it so that it wraps, and we're going to center and the content using justify content. Each item is going to have a flex basis of 19. So on a wide screen, that means we're going to get about five of the GIFs showing for each row. And we're going to set the image so that it fills up each segment of that flexbox column. And then we're also going to give it a little bit of responsive design where we're, all we're going to do is change the flex basis for smaller screens. So on like a tablet size screen, it will go down to three per row. And on a phone, it'll go down to two per row. So now we have a finished product. If we type in any text, we can hit submit and it will return a bunch of different variations of that text in an animated style. If we try to submit our empty string, we can see our error component pops up. So now the question is, what can you do with this API beyond just animating text? And there's quite a bit of stuff. So first off, they provide SDKs for Android, iOS, and the web SDK, which is what we've been using. So if you want to use it for different platforms, you have that option. They have a lot of different endpoints beyond what we use in this tutorial. So they have a trending endpoint, so you can just grab a bunch of currently trending uh, objects or GIFs. And they also have stickers and other stuff too that you'd return. They have a search endpoint, so uh, let's say you want to make something so that users just type in a word and it returns a bunch of related GIFs for that query. They have a translate endpoint, which you can use to kind of add some randomness into the result. So you can give it a word and then it'll return. It's kind of like a more creative endpoint, I guess you could say. They actually have a variable for the amount of weirdness. So on a scale of one to 10, you can say how weird or random you want the results to be. They have a purely random endpoint. So every time you hit it, it just returns a single random GIF. And for that one, they allow you to provide a rating argument so if you don't want potentially like some porn or some other not safe for work gif showing up you can control what actually gets returned and finally they have if you want to allow users to upload some of their own material or their own data they have an uploaded endpoint so you can automate that process